I request Sri Francis this is our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Goa to give a special address for ELITS, Digital, ELITS Knowledge Exchange Summit Goa on Smart Cities and Digital India. Sri Francis this is our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Goa. A big round of applause for him, sir. Thanks a lot, sir. Namaskars. A very good morning to each and every one of you. Respected dignitaries on the days, of the days, delegates from all over the place, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, I apologize for being late for this function because the first rains have just come in and uh, the traffic is a little bit difficult around this time of the day. It's, it's a little problematic. Uh, friends, we have come here for knowledge exchange on smart cities. When we talk about smart cities, we think that everything should be smart means. Smart in all sense of the term means. When you say smart means, it's good roads, it's good electricity, good water supply, good sewer system, good garbage system, good IT system, good transportation. All services connected to the common man should be smart. Now, the question is, when it took an okay, old city like Panjim, the capital of Goa, how do we make it smart now? Because it's an old, old city. So how you make an old man smart? It is that way. The old man is an old man. It has got its inherent problems. Over a period of time, it gathers a lot of problems. So how you make that man look smart. You just cannot put a coat over it and say, you look good. Now you put some powder on the face, you look good. You put some rouge on the cheeks and say, your cheeks are looking red now. It's nice. It's not that way. So all the services have to look smart. I would say when you plan a new city, you can think of all the concepts. When you want to start a new city, a new satellite city, you can do everything, you can think of everything and you can do it also because it's a planned city like Chandigarh you can go and see it's a planned city you can do a lot of nice things but when you come to a place like Panjim which is a very old city the roads are narrow the footpaths are not so good the water supply is not so good the electricity supply is not so good the sewerage system is not so good the garbage system is not so good. So, we have to redo everything. And that again, you have to have a harmonious relationship with your environment. You have to protect your environment. You have to have harmony with nature. You have to, you have to conserve heritage monuments. You have to take care of everything. Which is a difficult task, I feel, means. To maintain this balance is difficult. And that is a problem with most of the Indian cities. Most of the Indian cities are already overgrown. They have overgrown, I means the population is too big. The systems have collapsed. All systems have collapsed. Now, how to make them smart is a big challenge, I feel, means. It's one of the biggest challenges I feel for any government or any city fathers means. City fathers will have, it's a huge challenge when we want to redo things and look it smart. To, to make it look smart means it's a huge challenge. But uh, it's never too late. I would say it's never too late. Better late than never. So we can start redoing things slowly put things in place. See the concerns of the common man, it's a citizen who wants good services. How much we can achieve? 
We might not achieve hundred percent, but we might come to ninety percent. That's good enough. Ninety percent is good enough. So we cannot expect excellence in that sense that we can do everything or redo everything and make it hundred percent good. We might not achieve that because we have got so many constraints. Within those constraints, we have to work and then make it look good. Of course, we can uh, bring in e-services in the corporations that we can do. That is not a big task, I feel. Good internet system, high-speed internet, we can do those things. We can clean up the roads. Swachya Bharat, what the Prime Minister says, we can do that. Definitely we can do that. We can improve the sewage system, the garbage treatment systems. These things can be improved. Definitely we can achieve big results in these regards. So it's not that it is an impossible task. It is possible provided we go phase-wise and, and see that we don't uh, try to do everything at one time. We have to do it in phases. See that how we go do good in IT. Then we go to the sewage systems, uh, garbage systems. Try to put systems in place. The most important thing I, I see around the world, there are systems in place. If you have systems in place, things take care of itself. But if there are no systems, then uh, nobody knows what to do. So we have to have good garbage collection system. Segregation of garbage. A good system. I was told by the ambassador of Sweden that they collect garbage in eight comport components. Collection is in eight components. So that we don't have garbage problem, everything is recycled. In fact, there's no garbage problem in the world. Garbage can make money. Garbage can generate revenues, provided you do it the right way. So most of the recyclables you take out of the garbage and recycle them. Your sewage also, you take it to the STP and recycle and use the treatment water for, just today I read it that the stadium should be watered by the sewage treatment plant water. So we recycle everything, reuse things. Otherwise, what happens is, what happened in Mumbai, the whole garbage heap took caught fire because garbage gives out gases. Methane, ethane gases they give out and then the fire catches up and then it is very difficult to put out the fires because it's a huge quantity of garbage. So we cannot pile up garbage. As two days back we have laid a foundation stone for a, for a plant which treats plastic to fuel. It's a reverse hydrocarbon technology. So you take all the plastic, convert it into fuel. So we recycle plastic garbage. So that is one of the ways of doing things. Otherwise there is no way to treat plastic, it doesn't decompose. Over a period of it, it won't decompose. So only solution is to recycle, redo things or reuse things. These are the ways of doing things. But if you say I will get rid of garbage, how, what do you do with it? You can incinerate of course. There are places in the world where incineration is done. That is also possible. But best thing is to recycle and reuse. That would be the best possible method of doing things. Friends, you have come from all over the place, India and abroad also I was told. The important thing is exchanging knowledge. That is the most important thing we can do. Because we have to learn the good practices everywhere in the world. Everywhere in the world there are good practices. Only thing we don't know about them. So when we have meetings like this, we exchange ideas. And exchanging of ideas is very important. You learn. I always say learning is an endless process. You can never stop learning. New technologies will keep on coming. So we have to be knowledgeable that way. So this is one of the forums where you exchange knowledge, you learn new things, you learn the best practices. 
So we can rep replicate the best practices all over the world in our corporations, in our cities. It is important that we replicate the best practices. Sometimes it sounds a little difficult, but if you don't make a beginning, then you don't get it. So we can resolve to say make a new beginning. The Prime Minister's dream of Swachh Bharat, uh, smart cities, the very good concepts. The churning of ideas has begun. Exchange of ideas has begun. So now we have to make the best use of all our new ideas. We go home and we start replicating these ideas. Because tomorrow's citizen or today's citizen is a very demanding citizen. He's understanding his rights. He wants things to be done. He's in a big hurry. Today's citizen is in a big hurry. He says India has wasted decades doing nothing. We have started a little late or we were very slow in starting. We were slow in taking off the blocks. But it's never too late, I said. We can always make a new beginning. And see that we make our city smart. It's not an easy task, I said. It is a difficult task. It's a huge challenge. We have to have a harmonious changeover. Like protect nature, protect environment, protect our heritage monuments. We have to do all these things. But we have to find a way out. We have to sit and discuss. That's the best way of doing things. I always say, you sit and discuss. What are the difficulties? You'll find a solution. But if you don't sit and discuss, you'll never find a solution. So that is a problem with many of us, especially the elected representatives. They feel that they're elected, so we don't have to listen to anybody now. We are capable or we are competent enough to decide things. I do agree. As elected representatives, you have a right to decide things. But there's no harm in listening. There's no harm in listening to people. It's very important you listen. You might get a new idea, you might get a better idea, you might get an excellent idea. So why not listen so that we can upgrade our knowledge? Because when we are elected, maybe for the first time, we don't have any knowledge. Like uh, I am elected for four times now, I have a little knowledge. But that's not enough. I meet a lot of important people. I meet technology savvy people. They keep on telling me these are the new things that are coming in technology. It's always good to listen to them. It is very important to listen to them. So slowly you upgrade your knowledge and see what is best in the country and the world. So we have to achieve this excellence. It's a very hazardous task, I feel, very hazardous task. It's not simple. But we have to take the challenge in the interest of the community, in the interest of our citizens, because ultimately we have to achieve that benchmark of a good city. It's a huge competition which has started in India now. All cities are vying with each other to be the best number one cities in the world. So it's a good thing that is happening. I'm proud that my Prime Minister has rolled out these ideas of improving cities. But I would also say that excellent cities can be satellite cities, new cities, perfect cities, because you have more scope to mold them in the way you think. Old cities, it's not possible that way. To remold them, it's not that simple. So it would be advisable for many states which have got huge tracts of lands to have small satellite cities which are model cities with all the infrastructure possible with everything necessary for a common citizen to be proud of so friends I am happy that you have come to Goa I don't know from which parts you have, I have not uh, taken part in the deliberations and uh, I do feel that uh, this is not the best time of the year to be in Goa. The monsoons have just come in, in the southwest monsoons, which brings a lot of thunderstorms at around this time of the year. 
So suddenly you have thunder and lightning and flooding all over the place. So it restricts movements. The sea is very rough at this time of the year. Don't venture into the sea or the waters. Stay away from them. They are very treacherous around this time. The currents keep on changing. They are very strong currents. Even knee deep water is not advisable. A lot of things, people think, let me dip my legs in the sea water. It's a good feeling, but it's a dangerous situation. So be careful. They look very calm and serene, but they are dangerous. A lot of people have lost their lives. So my piece of advice. Secondly, Goa is one of the smallest states in the world. It's a dot on the world map. A small dot, you see. You might see it, you might not see it also. But it's the tenth most important destination in tourism in the world. So it's an important destination. We have a population less than 1.5 million. Less than 1.5 million. Consisted of urban, 14 urban local bodies. Only 14. Out of three are A class. The rest are B and C class. We have 190 panchayats. 118 and 190 panchayats. We have two districts, two sub-districts. So I have to understand the smallness of the place. We are 38% reserved for notified forest. Of this, our landmass is 3,702 square kilometers. It's a very small landmass, out of which nearly half is forest or green. So the rest is agriculture, the rest is roads, uh, open spaces. Oh, we have got a good sea, we have got a coastline of about 105 kilometers. The length is 105 kilometers of the state. The breadth is about 65-70 kilometers. So it's a very small state in the world, I would say. But it's a very green place. We have decided not to bring in red industries. We have categorized industries, red and green. So we don't want red industry. Polluting industry, we don't want. We made it a state policy. So smart cities also have to do the same things. Have your own policy for how smart your state, uh, city should be. And try to avoid things that contaminate the atmosphere, uh, in, reduce the pollution levels. All these things are to, get, to be taken into consideration. But uh, there, it cannot be a knee-jerk reaction also. You cannot say, stop this altogether. We have to phase out things. Be a little slow on deciding important things. Don't be very in a big hurry to say, stop this, stop this, stop this. Everything will come to a standstill. Don't do that. Rather than phase things out slowly, effectively. The idea is effectively do things, rather than do it in a knee-jerk reaction way. So friends, enjoy as stay Goa. Of course, Goa is a land of liquor, songs, Sun also, the sun is not there the last few days. So, it is a sunny time of the year. This is a summer actually. The monsoon schools it down, but it's a summer period. It's the hottest time of the year in Goa. If it doesn't rain for two days, you see the heat. So friends, enjoy your stay. Take good memories from Goa. Goa can give you very good memories. And do visit again. Thank you. Jai Hind.